Hey, David Charney here from eLearningLocker.com. I want to take a look at layers and triggers in your master slide and storyline and see how we can call them from anywhere else in your project. Not only does this help us build better reusable interactions and functionality in your project, but it also helps us manage those things. And if you want to make changes to them later, it's all in one spot and it's a lot easier to do. So here we are at a storyline preview. We have a pretty standard interaction. Here's a piggy bank, here's a bunch of hot spots. I can click on those hot spots and I got a little bit of uh, detailed information off to the right here. Now normally you would put uh, all the triggers and graphics on one slide and you know in that slide's layers. But what if you have another slide with the same interactions? And then what if you have 10 of these slides? Now let's say you want to make a change to this panel. Maybe you want to change the, the color. Maybe you want to change, you know, make this title a little bit larger. Uh, maybe you want to, maybe you end up having a lot of text and you want to create a, a little uh, scroll bar in here. Uh, you don't want to have to go back and change every single one of these across, you know, 10 different slides. It's a lot of triggers. I mean, multiply everything by 10. So then you might say, well, let me throw that little pop-up box here in a layer on the master slide, and I can just call it from a button like this. But the problem is, I'll create a trigger here. When I create a trigger to show layer, I don't have access to the, uh, to the layers on the master slide, which is a kind of a big issue. So how do you call a layer on a master slide from a button on, a, on an individual slide, like here or here? You know, again, if we have eight more of these, uh, how, do we, how do we call that? How do we keep everything in one place? So if I want to make a change, I can edit it all in one spot. If I want to add something like, let's say, a close button to all these panels, I don't have to do it 10 times. The way I do that is actually pretty simple. I want to have as, as minimal uh, triggers as I can on these buttons. You see I've got two items here, and this is where I can set the title and where I can set the details. And then I've got one more trigger uh, uh, that runs actually just right above that. And what I do there is I, I set a variable called show details equal to true when the user clicks that button. So what happens when I set that, uh, that, that variable to, uh, to true? And to show you that, I'll go into the master slide. So here in the master slide, I have a very simple uh, trigger. Show layer, show details. Here, let me expand that out. Show layer, show details, which is uh, just the, the name of this uh, layer that I created. Uh, when the variable changes, show details. So when the show details variable changes, I'm going to show this layer that's called show details. So that's pretty simple. Now I know I can access uh, this layer here. Now I could have just called the details layer here, which is the actual panel that slides out. But I tend to like to group things up a little bit cleaner. So I've created this little, you know, I'll call it a trigger function or trigger class or whatever we want to call it. Uh, but here I can put anything I want to in here that relates to showing the detailed screen. So for instance, when someone clicks the button on the piggy bank, uh, I want to hide the panel if it's already out. And if it's uh, when it's closed, I want to slide the panel out and fill it with information. Well, I'm already filling it with information because they're just variables on the, on the slide here, on the panel. So every time show details does run, I'm going to hide this layer, and then I'm going to show the layer again if the layer is set to true, and then I'm going to set the show details equal to false again, so that every time I click the button, it's like starting over, and I can just call this function again and again and again, and, and always uh, have this panel work exactly the way I want. Now what's nice about this is, if I want to just change the uh, text size here, if I want to change anything within here, I can do that, and it will automatically be used across the board for all, my, all the slides that I want to use the same interaction. What's also nice about using, I'll jump back into the master slide here, what's also nice about using this function here is that, let's say I've got a couple different colors of pop-outs, or maybe one on the right, one on the left, but I want to control them the same way. Well, by having this extra layer, uh, with uh, different triggers. I can have another variable, let's say, that says if it's going to be on the right or left, and um, have you know 90% of this run, but call instead of the details right, I'll call the details left. So it gives me a lot of ability to make changes quickly across the board, across multiple slides. 
And when you're working on a pretty big project uh, that you want to be nice and consistent and, and, um, and uh, easy to manage in the future, that's a, a very nice way to do it. So for instance, I don't have a close button on here. If I run this again, I can click one of these, I can click one of these, but I can't, I can't close this box. I can only close it for an instant when I, when I click the button. It closes and then reopens again. So let's say we had a little close button on here. I'll go back to the slide master in the details panel. I'll just add a little uh, close button with an icon and center that. And we'll just position that there and we'll create a trigger that says hide the layer, this layer, when the user clicks that text box. So now if I leave the slide master, preview this again, you'll see now I've got a nice little close button here. And if I go to the next screen and click any of these, I still have the close button. And that is how you can interact from within a slide back to the master slide. If this video was helpful to you, hit the like button. You can also hit subscribe and you'll be notified when new videos come out. And check out eLearningLocker.com for the sample I have here. You can also download tons of templates and little components and watch more videos and read articles and basically check out all things eLearning.